The map before you is Greece. What you see here is the mountainous regions that prevented contact between the various city-states. This led the city-states to be extremely independent from one another. Also, you notice that Greece is a peninsula jutting out into the Mediterranean, giving it a very strategic position and allowing it to be a successful sea-based trading society and also allowing it to colonize the various regions in the Mediterranean. You are seeing now typical landscape of Greece. Notice the hills, the rugged mountains, preventing adequate farmland. Because of this lack of farmland in this mountainous region you see, it, they Greek had to set up colonies. These colonies provided Greece with the food it needed to survive and to grow and prosper. The only city-state that did not set up colony, the predominant one, was Sparta, who conquered around a land. Now take a look at the map. The map is of China. And what I want you to can do is consider the geographic barrier, barriers that you see represented in China and think about those that are represented in Greece. What's the differences and what are the same? What advantages did China's geographic barriers offer them versus the... What advantages did Greece geographic barriers are, offer them? How are the geographic situations similar and different? When you view the map, you can see several major river systems in China. Greece had them. You can also see the presence of the Himalayan mountains, which effectively isolated China, much as the mountains did in Greece. What other similarities and differences can you make between these two civilizations? That will be your challenge. What you see now is on a comparison to geographical layouts of three different civilizations. We have studied Mesopotamia, Egypt, and Greece. And you're going to need to be aware of the similarities and difference of each. Um, Greece is the most mountainous of the three that are located up there. They're both Mesopotamia and Egypt both have unifying rivers that allow for trade and easy communication. Greece was probably the most isolated. Well, Egypt was probably the second most isolated, with Mesopotamia being the most open. One of the Greek time <coughs> periods we talked about was the Dark Ages. And the reason why we emphasize the importance of the Dark Ages is not only because it was, it was the fall of the Messian civilization, but it was also the, when the Dorians and Ionians, the Greeks and the Spartans, entered the field. And I think it's important that you realize that the roots of the Conflict between Athens and Sparta go back to the Dark, dark Ages with the, or, with the Dorians' arrival, who are the Spartans, and the Ionians' arrive, arrival and, establ and establishment of Athens. This is the root of the historic conflict between the two, and it continues throughout history and does not stop as Greece progresses. Also, you should know that the Dark Ages is known for being dark because after the Dorian invasion who were very warlike and possessed iron weapons most of the architectural and other advancements in Greece stopped literacy stopped writing stopped there's a period in history where it's very hard to find the information at the end of the dark ages came the Acropolis which were the root of the polis and these Acropolises start out as defensive structures and gradually the polises or city-states were built around these also, we need to remember talking about Greek art, and Greek art is known for its movement, for its um, lifelike style, for realism, as well as idealism. And we can see this in the Greek goddess, statue of the Greek goddess Nike. You can see the movement, and clearly see the movement in the statue as well as the clothes itself. Also, Greek is known for its columns. There are three types. Ionic, Doric, and Corinth, which you should be aware of when studying for your upcoming test. Upcoming now, you see the conquest of Alexander the Great. Now, you can see he conquered most of the then known world. Um, we don't focus so much on his conquest as we do the impact of his conquest. Through his conquest, Greek culture was spread throughout Asia Minor, down to Egypt, through Turkey, almost over to India. And um, he was a great conqueror, but did not have too much on, in, on administering an empire. Within a few years of his death, 
His empire divided in three sections, the kingdom Potomli, the Suclid kingdom, as well as the Antigo kingdom. After the fall of after Alexander the Great's death, these three kingdoms carry on Greek culture and they expanded it and became the centers of learning throughout the world, especially in Alexandria, Egypt. The much cultural fusion took place within these regions with Greek culture combining with other cultures to form unique, different things. Um, you can see this in the city of Alexandria, where Greek culture combined with Egyptian culture throughout the city. Um, the science and masses were greatly pro um, progressed during the Hellenistic era. More became known about the human body, the workings of the universe. It took the Europeans, it took the Western civilization thousands of years to catch up with the knowledge that was lost after the fall of the Hellenistic kingdoms. But please note that the Hellenistic kingdoms were competing. They did not co cooperate with each other. Each one was competing for the dominance of the of the region. And this competition would continue until the intervention of Rome when Rome conquered all these kingdoms, including the original kingdom of Greece. And as you can take a look at the map, you can see the extent and the greatness of Alexander's empire and his legacy of cultural diffusion. All right, the chart is located in your um, readings and in, in your palette readings. You need to be familiar with the hell the makeup of the Sparta and Athenians governments. Go over the chart. It's in your um, reading under the Greek padlet, and just take a look at this document. Hey guys, um. Now let's talk about the test coming up. You know, of course, you're gonna be needing to know all from all the different from um, things we talked about. Greece focus in particularly on development of Greek democracy, the geographic situation of Greece, and how it impacted its development, um, the Athenian social structure, and the concept of political disenfranchisement. Um, Hellenistic age and cultural diffusion, you basically know everything. Be able to con con compare and contrast any civilization we talked about in the past with Greece or with each other for that matter. Everything's on the table for this one. I don't expect it to be a very long test, but I do expect it to be a very comprehensive test. Good luck. Talk to you later.